On the 14th of July 2015, the New Horizon probe skimmed past Pluto. It was the first ever probe to have visited this planet. It then took a long time to receive all the data from this encounter, and an even longer time to analyse the data. Some of this data may just have rewritten the origin story of the most popular dwarf planet and changed our understanding of Pluto's early history. Astronomers have long held the view that Pluto started off as an icy cold rock in the Kuiper Belt. This new finding turns this notion entirely on its head and suggested it started as a hot planet and had a subsurface ocean when it first formed. This not only implies that it may have been habitable at some point during its early history, but also increases the potential for habitability for other icy objects within the Kuiper Belt. Previously, astronomers had thought that Pluto formed as an icy sphere and that it potentially had a liquid ocean flowing beneath its surface. The only way that they thought this ocean could have developed was that the icy planet melted from the inside out due to radioactive decay. When they analysed the images from New Horizons, the surface geology suggested that Pluto may have started off hot with a liquid ocean. They reasoned that if Pluto had started cold, the ice would have melted internally and water contracts when it melts. This means that Pluto should have contracted and evidence of that compression process would be visible on the surface. If Pluto had started off hot, the water would have frozen over time, expanding in the process, and the expansion features would be visible on the surface. When they examine the surface, you can indeed see large rifts across the surface, possibly indicating this expansion process. But it isn't uniform, and it isn't the same across the entire planet, which again is what you would expect, if the entire planet is cooling at the same time. They believe that this process may have occurred over a period of about 30,000 years when it weathered several impacts which warmed the surface, making it hot enough for an ocean to form, and then subsequently cooling. When we look at the surface of Pluto, it has a striking resemblance to the surface of Mercury, the Moon and Mars, and there is no coincidence in that, I believe. This is not a ball of ice that once melted and re-solidified. It has some remarkable features across its surface. From vast mountain ranges to large plateaus, there are some truly baffling elements. Large polygonal patterns stretch across vast patches of these basins. Some are over 12 miles wide. Astronomers think that these are either frozen tops of convection cells or contracting stresses as the surface shrank similar to the way that mud cracks as it dries. Many of the fissures also seem to have craters that cluster along the path of the fissure. Pluto's surface is red, very similar to that of Mars. However, it is believed that the reason Pluto's is red is because of hydrocarbons as opposed to iron, which is the cause on Mars. It also has mountain ranges that are over two miles high. And this in itself implies that they are composed of bedrock ice that is tectonically upthrust from the water ice core. For such a small body, these mountain elevations are quite surprising. Dark streaks several miles long appear to be deposits that they believe might be caused by either past geyser activity or wind-blown dust. There is a huge concentration of carbon monoxide within Tombo Regio, but no other carbon monoxide concentrations appear anywhere across the surface. There are fewer craters than they had suspected, and some areas are almost completely without craters, which is an unexpected finding, which suggests that Pluto must have formed much more recently. One of the biggest surprises was the fact that Pluto has an atmosphere that reaches a thousand miles into space. This atmosphere is composed of nitrogen and hydrocarbons. A tail of ionized nitrogen plasma blows in the solar wind from Pluto and extends some 68,000 miles into space. They speculate that this tail is the result of the solar wind stripping as much as 500 tons per hour out of Pluto's atmosphere. In comparison, Mars only has a tail carrying one ton per hour of material, despite being closer to the Sun, and this implies that it is far more energetic than it really should be. Pluto also has five moons, Charon, Hydra, Nix, 
Kerberos and Styx. The largest is Charon, and it too shows many similar features to Pluto, but some of the rather striking ones include a large dark spot named Mordor by the team, and it appears to be a thin veneer surrounded by a reddish outer ring, a series of troughs and cliffs extending 6,000 miles across the surface, similar polygonal shapes, vast smooth areas without craters, a long linear canyon over six miles deep, and a much lower amount of cratering again than they expected. So where does this leave us? The composition and complexity of Pluto suggests a process far more complex than a simple hot ice ball that froze over time. Looking at the composition of Pluto, it would suggest an origin connected with one of the gas giants. So could some electrical event have caused Pluto to be ejected? Or was it captured from elsewhere? Is the electrical scarring we see a remnant of our catastrophic past? Did it happen at a similar time to the scarring on Mars? Some parts do show deep etching from the surface and then vast areas of flat plains with the polygonal patterns which terminate in the huge mountain ranges. Is material being pulled up and deposited from one end of the planet onto the other? What do the polygonal patterns indicate? I do find it curious when we examine these polygonal patterns that they all seem to have double lines. The fact that we see large surface deposits of carbon monoxide in only one area is also puzzling. It is the largest bright surface feature on Pluto and is located just north of the equator. It contains no craters and is rich in nitrogen, carbon monoxide and methane ices. The fact that the carbon monoxide is concentrated on one central area makes it even stranger. Is some process causing only carbon monoxide to be deposited here? Or is there some special process going on that is causing carbon monoxide to be produced at that point? There are hydrocarbons in the atmosphere, so again, there could be a connection with those. Why does it appear that the solar wind has a much greater effect on Pluto than, for example, Mars? Is this more to do with a discharge phenomena? Is this similar to a comet? Is the tail that we see not the result of the solar wind, but an imbalance in charge? There are many clues hidden away in the data from Pluto that are worth exploring in more depth and comparing these across all the planets and the moons of our solar system. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.